Hello scholars. In this video, I'll be answering 25 of the most frequently asked interview questions for the position of clinical pharmacist. Whether you're preparing for your first interview or looking to brush up on key topics, this video will help you feel more confident and ready. The very first question is tell me something about yourself. With this question interviewer wants to assess you how well your communication is and definitely he or she wanted to know your presentation skills. I am a doctor of pharmacy graduate with over two years of experience working in clinical and hospital pharmacy settings. During my one year internship and professional roles, I have gained practical experience in medication therapy management, patient counseling, drug interaction checks, and working closely with doctors to improve patient care. My skills include pharmacovigilance, prescription auditing, reviewing prescriptions for accuracy, and using clinical guidelines to make safe, evidence-based decisions. I am known for being detail-oriented, a good communicator, and always following high ethical standards. I am now looking for a clinical pharmacist role where I can be more involved in patient care and work with a healthcare team that supports learning and quality care. Second question. Why did you choose clinical pharmacy as your career? Your answer would be like, I chose clinical pharmacy because it combines my passion for healthcare and patient interaction. Unlike traditional pharmacy roles, Clinical pharmacy allows direct involvement in patient care by reviewing drug therapies, identifying interactions, and recommending better alternatives. It gives me the opportunity to apply my pharmaceutical knowledge to improve treatment outcomes and prevent medication-related issues. Next question. What is the role of clinical pharmacist in a hospital? Your answer would be like, a clinical pharmacist is responsible for ensuring the safe, effective, and economical use of medicines. This includes reviewing patient medications, detecting drug interactions, providing dosing recommendations, monitoring therapeutic outcomes, and educating patients and healthcare staff. They work closely with physicians and nurses to optimize therapy and improve patient outcomes. Fourth question, how do you handle drug interactions? Your answer would be like, I begin by identifying any potential drug interactions using clinical databases like Micromedex, Lexicomp, or Medscape. I assess the clinical significance, then communicate with the prescribing physician to recommend safer alternatives or adjustments. I always consider the patient's condition, other medications, and lab results before making a decision. Fifth question. Can you explain the concept of therapeutic drug monitoring? Your answer would be like, TDM involves measuring drug concentrations in the blood at designated intervals to ensure a constant therapeutic level. It's especially important for drugs with a narrow therapeutic index, like phenytoin, digoxin, or aminoglycosides. TDM helps avoid toxicity and ensures effectiveness. I monitor lab reports, adjust dosages, and communicate findings to the care team. Sixth question. How do you stay updated with new drug information? And your answer is... I regularly read journals like the American Journal of Health System Pharmacy and Clinical Pharmacology. I also attend webinars, participate in CME programs, and follow updates from regulatory authorities like FDA and WHO online platforms like Medscape and UpToDate are part of my daily reading. Describe your experience in patient counseling. Answer is, during my internship and work experience, I counseled patients on medication use, side effects, storage, and adherence. I ensured they understood their therapy in simple language, especially elderly patients or those with chronic conditions like diabetes and hypertension. My focus is always on clarity and empathy. How do you manage high-pressure situations? Answer is, I prioritize tasks based on urgency and clinical importance. For instance, emergency medications or high-alert drugs come first. I use a systematic workflow, stay calm, and double-check everything. Good time management and teamwork are key in such situations. What is your approach to medication reconciliation? An answer is, I compare the patient's current medication orders with their previous medication history to identify discrepancies. This involves talking to patients, caregivers, and checking records. I ensure continuity of therapy and avoid omissions, duplications, or wrong dosing during transitions of care. How do you handle a situation where a physician disagrees with your recommendation? Answers. I maintain professionalism and present clinical evidence to support my recommendation. I focus on the patient's safety and therapeutic benefit. If needed, I consult guidelines or escalate to a senior pharmacist. Mutual respect and clear communication usually resolve differences. Can you explain pharmacovigilance? Answers. Pharmacovigilance is the science of detecting, assessing, 
understanding, and preventing adverse effects or any drug-related problems. It involves reporting adverse drug reactions ADRs, analyzing them, and contributing to safer drug use. I've been trained to report ADRs to national programs and maintain documentation. What clinical software or tools are you familiar with? Answer is, I have some experience using tools like Lexicomp, Micromedex, and UpToDate for drug information. I'm also comfortable with Hospital Information Systems is Drug Information System DAS, Electronic Medical Records EMRs, and Pharmacy Inventory Software. How do you calculate renal dosing for medications? Answer is, I use the patient's serum creatinine and calculate creatinine clearance using the Cockroft called formula. Based on the result, I adjust doses or dosing intervals for renally excreted drugs. This is especially important for drugs like aminoglycosides, vancomycin, and metformin. What would you do if you noticed a medication error? Answer is, I would immediately report it to the healthcare team, correct the error if possible, and ensure the patient is monitored for adverse effects. I document the incident and participate in root cause analysis to prevent recurrence. Patient safety always comes first. How do you handle antibiotic stewardship? Answer is, I review antibiotic prescriptions to ensure appropriate selection, dosing, duration, and route. I also educate staff on resistance patterns and promote their escalation based on culture reports. My goal is to reduce antibiotic resistance while ensuring effective treatment. Mechanism of action of vonoprazen. Answer is, vonoprazen competitively blocks potassium ions K from binding to the H-KATPase enzyme. This prevents the final step of gastric acid secretion hydrogen ion exchange, leading to a potent and long-lasting suppression of gastric acid production. Name 5 drugs with a narrow therapeutic index. Answer is digoxin, warfarin, lithium, phenytoin, and theophylline. Can you mention some antidotes frequently used in hospitals? Answer is Below please note down some antidotes. What are VRSA and MRSA? Answer VRSA stands for methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus and MRSA stands for vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Name drugs contraindicated in pregnancy. Answer here are some drugs, isotretinoin, ACE inhibitors, warfarin, valproic acid, and tetracyclines are contraindicated due to their teratogenic effects or risk of fetal harm. What are orphan drugs? Answer. Orphan drugs are medicines developed to treat rare diseases, which affect a small percentage of the population. What's your understanding of evidence-based medicine EBM? Answer. Evidence-based medicine EBM is a clinical approach that integrates the best available research evidence, clinical expertise, and patient preferences to guide healthcare decisions. What are signs of digoxin toxicity? Answer. Symptoms include nausea, vomiting, visual disturbances e.g. yellow vision or halos, dizziness, confusion, and life-threatening arrhythmias. Monitoring serum levels is critical. How do you approach counseling for a newly diagnosed diabetic patient? Answer. I approach counseling a newly diagnosed diabetic patient by explaining the disease, Emphasizing lifestyle changes, diet, exercise, medication adherence, blood glucose monitoring, recognizing signs of hypo slash hypoglycemia, and the importance of regular follow-ups, all tailored to the patient's understanding and readiness to manage their condition. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Answer. In the next five years, I see myself growing into a more experienced clinical pharmacist, taking on greater responsibilities, contributing to patient care, staying updated with clinical advancements, and possibly mentoring junior staff. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to support my work.